Good evening. Uh, let me welcome you to our midweek virtual refuge service. Uh, and even though we've started meeting in person on our campuses to have Sunday morning worship services, uh, our Wednesday nights, they're going to continue to be online for the foreseeable future. Uh, tonight, I want us to pick back up where we left off uh, last Wednesday night. Uh, there is a question that I've been asked many times since I've been a pastor. And it goes like this, why aren't my prayers being answered? Uh, you know, if you step before Jesus and, and you ask him that question, I think his answer might be, well, because you stopped praying too soon. And so we're going to learn from Jesus' words recorded in Matthew chapter 7, 7 through 12, that there is great power in persistent praying. Let me read it to you. He says, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and prophets. So our Lord there kind of tells us, here's the reason why your prayers are not being answered. And so I want us to focus on three lessons that he teaches us in this about prayer. The first lesson, we talked about it two weeks ago, is this. If at first you don't get an answer, uh, then you pray and you pray again. Uh, Jesus said, ask and it will be given to you. Uh, seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Uh, the tense in the Greek language that Jesus used for uh, ask, seek, and knock, it's, it's called the present imperative literally means this, ask and keep on asking, seek and keep on seeking, knock and keep on banging on heaven's door. And so the reason why more prayers don't seem to be answered is that people stop praying. Secondly, last week we said prayer is about improving your relationship with God. It's not just about receiving things. The only way you can build a relationship with someone is to spend time with them. Uh, so is your prayer life more about handing a shopping list to God or is it about spending time with him so you can know him in a deeper, uh, a more intimate way? And then third, this is where we pick up tonight. Prayer changes things and mostly prayer changes you. Maybe you've seen the bumper sticker that says prayer changes things and that's okay. Uh, but really I've discovered it's more accurate to say prayer changes people. You see, I think the point of every message is not to get you to just understand something. I think it's to motivate you to do something. Every parable of Jesus has a so what attached to it. Uh, you may be surprised to find that after uh, Jesus teaches, his, teaches on prayer, uh, in the very next breath, he speaks about what is often called the golden rule. It's in verse 12. See, see, he says, so in everything, do to others what you would have them do unto you. The American version of the golden rule is, he who has the most gold makes the rules. Uh, but the golden rule isn't the one with the most gold makes the rules. Uh, now the golden rule is greatly misunderstood in our world. Uh, some people think the golden rule is a formula for getting into heaven. Yeah, if you ask some people if they're going to heaven, they say, well, I... I try to treat others the way I want to be treated. Uh, this is not a formula for salvation. It's a description of how God's children will act like our heavenly dad by showing them the same kindness that he has shown us. And so Jesus is saying the more time you spend with God in prayer, uh, you learn that God treats each of us not the way we deserve to be treated, but he treats us the way we need to be treated. Some misguided people, uh, they look at their adversity and they shake their fists toward heaven and they say, I don't deserve to be treated this way. I deserve better than this. Uh, 
I never say that because I don't want God to treat me the way that I deserve to be treated. In fact, uh, my standard reply to anyone who asks me how I'm doing is to say, well, I'm doing better than I deserve. You see, I'm a sinner. And I deserve death. I deserve hell. But God shows kindness and grace toward me. Grace is God giving me what I need. It's it's not what I deserve. The golden rule. It was born in God's heart. Because we read in Romans 5.8, God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. One of my favorite verses, Psalm 37, 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Uh, I had a friend in college who was studying for, for the ministry, show me that verse with great excitement. And here's what he said. He said, God knows that I really desire a Corvette to drive, so I'm going to delight myself in the Lord, and he's going to give me a Corvette. A red one. Uh, And I didn't want to discourage him, so I just said, well, good for you. And he prayed, and he prayed for months. And uh, and one day I saw him in the dorm parking lot pulling up in a used Chevrolet Vega with a faded paint job. And I said, what happened to your Corvette? And he smiled, and he said, the more I delighted in the Lord... He changed the desire of my heart to anything that would get me around town. And that's a great lesson. See, see, prayer is more of a relationship than it is a request. When you have a desire, you keep coming to God. You keep asking. You keep seeking. You keep knocking. Don't stop. And as you spend more and more time with God, your heart will become like His heart. His desires will become your desires. The more time we spend in intimate fellowship with God, the more his desires become our desires. True story. During the Civil War, a Confederate soldier was killed in battle. And as they were preparing to dispose of his body, they found a folded piece of paper in his pocket that contained a testimony about prayer. Now, we don't know if the soldier wrote this. We don't know if it was written by someone else. Uh, But it is a powerful statement about letting God's desires become our desires. Here's what it said. I ask for strength that I might achieve. He made me weak that I might obey. I ask for health that I might do great things. He gave me grace that I might do better things. I ask for riches that I might be happy. He did not give them to me so that I might be wise. I asked for power that I might have the praise of men. Instead, I was given weakness that I might feel a need of God. I asked for all things that I might enjoy life. I was given life that I might enjoy all things. I received very few of the things that I asked for, but I received the things that I had hoped for. So trust God. Commune with him in persistent prayer. God always chooses the best for those who leave the choice to him. Join me in prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much for prayer. Thank you, Lord, for how you use it. Not to change your mind, but thank you use it. Thank you for how you use it to change our minds. Thank you, Lord, that It is through prayer that you shape our heart's desires so that they may become after your desires. Lord Jesus, help us to be people of prayer. Help us, Lord, never to forget that the most powerful weapon we have is the power and the weapon of prayer. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us grace and mercy and not what we deserve. And thank you, Lord, that you have plans for us that are greater than anything we could ever imagine. We love you so much. And Lord, we pray that you would continue to move and work in our world. Draw us closer to you. May you take the things that the 
evil one has intended to bring harm in our lives. And may you work it for our good and for your glory. For it is in Jesus' name we are able to pray. Amen. I'm thankful that you were able to tune in tonight. I do look forward to the days that our Wednesday night gatherings can start happening again and our Wednesday night meals and children and student and collegiate activities. I miss those times with you guys. Hopefully, uh, that'll be coming in the near future. We just don't know right now. But I do want to encourage you when it comes to Sunday morning services. Uh, the last two weeks, our staff's done a great job to make sure uh, that we follow the guidelines, to make sure that we've set everything up to keep you safe. Many of you that came have said, wow, I didn't realize it would be this way. And you guys have done a phenomenal job. And thank you for those encouraging words. But I say that because I want to encourage many of you who've yet to come. Come on, join us this Sunday. Now, a lot of you guys are in a uh, demographic of people because of health conditions and things along those lines, you know, maybe you don't need to be out. But there's many of you. It'd be great for you to gather together with God's people. And we're thankful over the last 10 weeks to be able to have the, uh, uh, the online experience and the digital influence that we have as a church. And uh, we are seeing uh, many thousands of folks, 10,000 people, uh, that we reach every single week uh, through the services online. Uh, but those services were never intended uh, for folks who live here in Panama City in Bay County to stay at home. And so some of you guys, I want to encourage you, come back this week. You say, well, I'm waiting for our children's ministries to start again. No, mom and dad, go ahead, bring that child. Let them sit next to you on the road. Let them look and listen and worship with you. You say, what if they wiggle? They will. What if they get loud? They probably will. It'll be all right. Our services are tailored for just an hour right now. Everything is thoroughly disinfected before anybody new comes on the campus. And we keep the doors locked until 15 minutes before the next service to allow uh, you to get in and get a seat. We have ministers that are making sure that there are three seats between every family group. Uh, we've got the rows on the floor six feet apart. We have every other row in stadium seating closed down. And so uh, we're doing everything we can to make sure we're not putting you in an environment that could be unsafe for you. But come on. For many of you, uh, you could come on back and we would love to be able to have you. I'd love to be able to see you. So uh, this week our prayer is that you'll join us again. Uh, hey, I don't want you to, uh, I don't want you to, uh, go ahead and turn it off. Now, we've got a great song that's coming up by a young man in our church, Bryson Blaylock. It's entitled, God Can Do Anything. And Bryson is an intern here in our music ministry, our worship ministry, and also within our student ministry. He leads worship every single Sunday out at our Kingswood campus uh, there in Southport. And so we're thankful for him. And you'll be blessed by this song. If you know it, sing along with him be encouraged. I love you. Thank you for letting me be your pastor. Uh, this too shall pass, and we'll get through this to the other side, and I believe God's going to use it to do great and mighty things for His glory and for His kingdom. Um, again, I hope to get to see you this Sunday. If not, then I hope to get to see you very soon. God bless you guys. Have a great rest of the night.
just one touch I feel the power in heaven Just one touch My eyes are open to see My heart can't help but breathe There's nothing that our God can't do It's not a mountain that He can move Who oh, prays in name that makes a way There's nothing that our God can't do There's no power like this power in Jesus. Let faith arise. Let it all agree. There's no power like this power in Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like this power in Jesus. Let faith arise. Let it all agree. There's no power like this power. There's nothing that our God can do. There's not a mountain that he can move. Who oh, prays in name that makes a way? There's nothing that our God can do. Oh, there's nothing that our God can do. There's not a prison wall he can break through. Who oh, prays in name that makes a way? 